Hi there, Jason and Tony Butts of Forge a Legacy. Have you ever been stunned by a relationship that suddenly ended? What happens when communication is cut off? What do you do with that and how should you proceed? Many people have their own thoughts on this. Some even form their own opinions on what must be done and not done. But God gives us rock solid instructions on what to do. Even if communication is totally cut off and there's nothing that can be done to rescue the relationship. However, when communication is cut off, it's critical to look at what occurred and understand what happened, what to do next, and what not to do. So buckle up because we're going to go through quite a bit today. Mm -hmm. But hold on because I think you'll get a bigger picture of what God's doing in reconciling relationships. Yes. He is really about relational integrity. He's about not just us having it right with him, but mm -hmm. with others. And I feel like we're in a season like never before in my lifetime where he's, as he's cleaning house in his church, we know from Ezekiel, and also from First Peter that he that judgment comes to the house of God first. He's actually cleaning out his house for our good. Mm -hmm. And also so then we're more effective for advancing the kingdom of God. Because come on, there's going to be a harvest mm -hmm. of souls coming. Yes. But we need to get things right in house. And I don't mean just in the four walls. I mean as we walk and talk with each other, what does that look like? And what are the barriers? And then what are the blessings that we need in order to walk in a manner worthy of the calling in relational integrity with God and man? So let's buckle up. Here we go. What causes communication to be cut off in a relationship? There's a wide range of possibilities, all steeped in sin when it boils down to it, though. Number one, it might be a perhaps a difference of opinion came up. Just two different ways of looking at it. Neither wrong, just different. Number two, a disagreement. Three, a, a perception. An assumption even, right? Four, five, and six kind of fit together. A miscommunication, a misinterpretation, or a misunderstanding. Just not meeting each other. Number seven, an attitude. The way one was brought up impacts the attitudes of their hearts. The things that have happened to them, whether they've been processed or unprocessed yet, impacts a person in their attitudes. An offense, number nine, number eight, I should say, an offense. And so, you know, when we have an unhealed place and something bumps up against that, oh boy, that can cut off communication if we're not careful. Number nine, a vulnerability is brought to the surface. An unhealed place. Sometimes you might have gone a long time, not even realize that was an issue. Think, oh, we're good because we're coasting through. And then something happens. Circumstances have a way of bubbling up the dross, right? Mm -hmm. But if we allow the refiner's fire to work his way in us, oh, that gold or that silver drops to the bottom and there's purity in that. So that vulnerability, cutting off communication, if we even think about that, Lord, let it cause us to say, refiner's fire, come. Mm -hmm. Where's the unhealed place? That's for any of these things. But a sin, number 10, a sin was exposed. Oh boy, didn't even know it was a sin and bang, there was some miscommunication. There was some communication issue where, where that sin was brought to light. Maybe it was a person. Maybe it was the person that God used as a messenger in that case. And will we acknowledge that sin and deal with it? Mm. Number 11, an unholy motive was uncovered. You know, Hebrews says that God is judging the thoughts, motives, and intentions of our hearts. He's not just looking at what I did, 
the action because he knows my reason behind it, my motive behind it, and he wants to clean house. And when, when I'm not communicating properly with the right motive, communication can sometimes be shut off because, mm. oh boy, that motive is, is shown or it's coming to the surface and some of us shut down then. We have to recognize that. Number 12, one person or party wanted to move on. They just they just wanted to move on. It might be out of selfishness. It might be out of insecurity. It might be out of an attitude of the heart. It can be out of a variety of reasons. And the list goes on, but what we can do is allow Holy Spirit to sift, to work through, to guide us through why we're doing what we're doing. Get to the root and allow him to heal. Where Where's he at in that? Mm. Are there any hooks in there? Are there any generational patterns in there? Are there evil things that have been done against or or have been married to, partnered with? Mm. We need to confess. We need to repent. We need to replace. We need to move forward when that's the case because that communication being cut off isn't necessarily of him. A relationship often becomes obliterated when communication is shut off. Mm. Obliterated. It, it's like starving a relationship of oxygen. Without the ability to breathe, death is inevitable. Unless you take immediate efforts to resuscitate the relationship. Sure. If you don't do that, things are going to move very quickly towards death. Which would mean, if you're going to take action to try to save it, the lines of communication need to be open and dialogue not stifled. In general, when a relationship appears to be healthy, but communication is suddenly cut off and one person refuses to engage, this happens when number one, control is initiated by one of the persons or parties. Immediately, there's a sense of number two, lording over a relationship that has occurred by cutting off any form of communication. This is when emotions and imaginations can run wild. Yes. People can feel vulnerable and irrational words and actions can take place. Let's take a quick look at narcissism or manipulation and gaslighting. The Oxford Dictionary defines narcissism as an excessive interest in or admiration of oneself and one's physical appearance. In psychology, when it comes to narcissism, it's selfishness involving a sense of entitlement, a lack of empathy, and a need for admiration as characteristics or a personality type. And then within psychoanalysis, it's self-centeredness arising from failure to distinguish the self from external objects, either in very young babies or as a feature of mental disorder. When it comes to manipulation, it's the action of manipulating someone in a skillful manner or the action of manipulating someone in a clever or scrupulous, unscrupulous yeah. way. Yes, mm -hmm. one that's it's got a hidden motive. And then gaslighting is a term that we hear a lot these days, which is to manipulate someone using psychological methods into questioning their own sanity or power of reasoning. God is not glorified by relationships ending, except toxic ones laden with the above examples. There are two steps that occur in a relationship ending. The first is controlling the relationship by cutting off communication. This could be in person, it could be verbal, it could be written. And secondly, unforgiveness or not asking for forgiveness. A person can grow calloused to honoring where someone else is at. Yes, that's good. Mm. A person who cuts off communication displays some of the following tendencies. Immaturity. A haughty spirit. A hiddenness. Mm. Unspoken or ulterior motives. A lack of true and transparent friendship. An unwillingness to be an authentic friend, spouse, family member, or business partner. 
and then manipulation, control, as Jason was talking about before. Lording over, dominating, reigning other demonic influence, influences swirling around mm -hmm. the person being number one. Yes. And so a big piece of that nowadays that I really want to call out that, that I'm seeing is this Jezebel spirit that dominates through diplomacy. Mm. It looks good. There's a mask of a smile, but it's fake. It's fake. Behind it, there is so much evil coming forth. There is a, a desire to lord over by looking good because it fools the masses. So get discernment mm -hmm. because the days are evil. Can a relationship survive? when a person cuts off communication. Absolutely. Anything is possible with God. Mm. Hearts, though, need to be pliable. We see families reunited, reconnected, rekindled, restored, and healed. And those that do get to that point because they are pliable. They're teachable. They're yielded unto the Lord. And with that comes a willingness to work on relationship. And then communication can be re-established. Mm -hmm. Relationship can be rebuilt. And it honors both God and man. But hearts must be pliable. Forgiveness must be infused into the relationship quickly so the devil doesn't get a foothold. Mm -hmm. But... People do have a free will. So we need to surrender and not live offended. Or in light of the above mentioned attributes of a person who cuts off communication. If the Lord highlighted any of those to you, and if you have to go back and rewatch it, do it, right? But if he's highlighting areas to you where you've cut off communication in your past, or you see it in your family line, or you see it as a tendency even in your life, or you even did it once. Repent. Break up with it. And replace it with right thinking. And right heart. Talk with Jesus about that. Because an offended heart doesn't change the world for the kingdom of God. It works for another kingdom. Again, people have to be willing We'll get to this later, but I'll say it again now because it's really, really important. The Apostle Paul says, as far be it for me, live at peace with one another. I got to do my part. I got to lay down my pride. I often have to lay down my time, talent, and treasure. In fact, that's really big. Really big. Mm-hmm. When I lay down my pride, it's it's laying down everything that I am. Going low to say, hey, I saw this. I thought this. But I'm willing to do whatever it takes according to God's ways so that we can move forward. We must admit our wrong. Where the Lord is showing us there are things that don't align with him in relationship or where that person was hurt because of our choices, boy, let's admit that. Define what they did or may have done to harm the relationship hmm. in your own heart. And then on top of that, define what you've done or may have done to harm the relationship. What pieces caused it to come to this place and what can be reconciled from there? Unfortunately, many people experience the demise of relationships from friendships to marriages to families due to one or more people cutting off communication. 
They actually put up walls of their hearts where they're not contactable anymore, where they, they, won't, they won't speak. They might have sent a text and that was it. They might have said, this is the problem. And you say, can we talk about it? And they say, no. That's not your thing anymore then. You try what you can try. The emotional pain and relational dysfunction becomes too much to recover from in those cases. Not because God can't heal you to use that for your future relationships, but you can't force someone to tear down walls they've erected because they have, they have put up boundaries Maybe knowingly disobeying the Lord, but I'm going to say often it's unknowingly. They aren't yet at a place where intimately they understand the Father's love to know how to move beyond that. They've never walked in a situation and they're not, maybe they're not allowing Holy Spirit to guide them right now and the Father's love to guide them to a place of knowing how to walk whole to reconcile. Many, many people have come to a place in their lives where where there are differences, they have this belief. We part ways and we, we move on. I don't see that scripturally. Now, I mean, we know that some did part ways. I'm not saying that there's never a time, but I don't think it's the norm. And yet we have made it a norm in Western society to part ways as soon as there's a disagreement when as far be it from me we're to live at peace with one another and we're to reconcile each other and recognize each other's strengths and weaknesses and walk with them because we're the body. You don't cut off a hand because it's not working right. You rehabilitate it. Mm. Here's the truth of the situation. If you've experienced a relationship where communication has been cut off, it's paramount to be discerning. Mm -hmm. If there's anything I can say today, it's friends, we must walk in greater discernment. Ask the Father, who, by the way, is the giver of all good and perfect gifts, for more discernment. How do we do that? We look back at the history of the relationship. History is really important. It'll repeat itself if we don't look back mm -hmm. and learn from it. Look for patterns that could be unhealthy. Patterns are a key indicator of something going on. It's like a wheel. It turns over and over and over. Be honest about any potential confusion or harm you may have brought to the relationship through your words, motives, and actions. Be honest. Honesty is absolutely key. Mm -hmm. Perfection isn't key, actually. It's honesty. Mm -hmm. It's authenticity. Step back and reevaluate the relationship. Recalibrate what needs to shift. If it can't be in that situation because the person's cut off communication, you still can recalibrate so that you're whole and ready for who else the Lord puts in your life mm -hmm. so that you can walk forward. Be careful not to chase down the other person or party in an unwise or an unhealthy manner. They are not your God. It's not your job to people please. Mm. I hope that sets some of you free today. Absolutely. Be aware of your emotions and don't let your feelings dictate your actions that follow when communication has been cut off. Be aware of your heart. What does scripture say? Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. This is your wellspring. What are you going to put in it? As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Get these emotions lined up. I like to say, get your mind, will, and emotions so your soul under your spirit under his Holy Spirit. Yes. And then things work properly. Absolutely. Don't chase down the shards of a now fractured relationship in hopes of it remaining to what it was because it's no longer the same. 
You can either grow from it mm -hmm. with the person or without the person, depending on what they allow. It, it's not going to look the same. It would be awesome to grow with the person and enlarge your territory and your authority in the spirit realm because you made it through. But some will say, no, nope, I'm not doing that. But as far be it for me, I'm going to live at peace with one another. And so I'm still going to grow from this. And I'm not going to go after those shards. I'm going to be whole. If anything, I'm just going to be whole. So that whoever, whenever the Lord brings more people into my path and I into theirs, I've learned because God's grace has been enough and it will be to move forward too. As much as it hurts, you can only do what you can do on your side of the relationship. Allow the Lord to heal all those broken pieces. Let's take a further look at understanding what's going on here. If a person cuts off communication, uses silent treatment, ghosts you, avoids you, it's very important that you don't take that issue on as your own issue. If you didn't cut off communication and have been honest, you don't need to walk in shame. This is easier said than done, but you will need to move on. It will be best to move on. But why did this happen? It seems completely unnecessary. Unanswered, unanswered questions can abound at why the relationship ended so abruptly. We understand that, and I'm sure you've experienced that as well. It can be painful and may very well need counseling in order to get through it. You might need insight and wisdom from godly counsel to help you walk through it so you don't get stuck in the pain. You don't get frustrated further and even operate in hatred that can swell from it because that can come and go. Forgiveness has layers. If you're not careful, you can grow in bitterness. You're not going to get better from dwelling on the whys of what happened with the relationship. We will have trials and tribulations in this life. God promises it. But he helps us with his word to overcome the disappointments that come our way. And in terms of a relationship ceasing to be open to communication, the power of God's truth shines through in ways that help us not just cope, but have understanding, walk uprightly, and heal from all forms of relational pain. Here's the, here's the truth, the reality of communication being cut off. First, it's an empty life when a person ends a relationship. And secondly, it's an empty life void of true community when one controls or attempts to control various aspects of a relationship from physical to mental, emotional to spiritual, and everywhere in between. Cutting off communication and ending a relationship is the opposite of the heart of God. Yes. We don't have to look alike or sound alike to be in a relationship. We can still honor the differences. Amen. Wow, that is the body of Christ. In fact, we were created for worship. Mm -hmm. What do we do to worship? It's not just we go to church and we sing our three songs. It's not just that we do our morning devotions. It's actually... Our time, talent, and treasure, whatever we put effort into, money, people, relationships, whatever we do is our driving force. Is it for the Lord? Is it for advancing his kingdom or for another kingdom? A lot of us coast through in neutral. And the enemy loves it because we're not taking ground. And in fact, he can put his hooks in easily that way. We were made for worship. We were made for fellowship, connection, connection. We were made to laugh together, to cry together, 
to do life together. In community, where we value what everyone carries, where we even recognize what people don't carry and we don't make them feel less than because of it or we don't expect them to carry what they don't carry. We don't, we actually acknowledge their weaknesses. They are in a safe place that they can acknowledge their weaknesses and together we can focus on bringing out the gold in one another and building one another up. When community is non-existent due to dissolving relations, what's left? Nothing good. Let's listen. Isolation. Resentment. Bitterness. Misunderstanding. Accusations. Nothing is good about that list. The enemy loves to see relationships break down. In a broken state, people succumb to more wiles of the enemy in their lives, and it's dramatically perpetuated out into society from there. God gives us the process of how to fix misunderstandings and downright sin in his word. Yet most Christians don't follow the simple step-by-step -step instructions. These instructions are for our own good. So why aren't they utilized as they should be by Christians and the church as a whole? Why? Because it, it exposes any wickedness within us or that has influenced our thinking. And many naturally run and hide our hearts to self-preserve. We'd rather cut off communication so that we can protect our own point of view then follow God's method of reconciliation that blesses all involved. Even if there is pain in the process of following Matthew chapter 18, there's still benefit that impacts all involved. Yes, even through discipline. Remember that God disciplines those he loves. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. Hebrews 12, 5, and 6. If both people, both parties, want to keep the relationship, the Matthew 18 process of, process of reconciliation is critical. It must be followed through on. Specifically, this is for correcting another believer. And it fits perfectly for how Christian relationships should function, operate above reproach, and prosper to the blessings of all involved. We'll start with Matthew chapter 18, verse 15 through 17. If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. But if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again, so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. If the person still refuses, take your case to the church. Then if he or she won't accept the church's decision, treat the person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. Furthermore, Matthew 5, 23 and 24 in the Bible says, if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. We need to take that to heart. Go fix what's wrong. Talk it out. Make it right. Don't aim to be right, but to make the relationship right. Let's look at a couple more scriptures. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. In James 1.9, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. It is better to work it out than to go to next levels of fallout and discipline, mm -hmm. as Jesus' word talks about in 
Luke 12, 57 through 59. And why do you not judge for yourself what is right? As you go with your accuser before the magistrate make an effort mm -hmm. to settle with him on the way. Yes. Lest he drag you to the judge and the judge hands you over to the officer mm -hmm. and the officer puts you in prison. I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the very last penny. Mm. If one person or party is unwilling to keep the relationship, we talked about it earlier, but it's a good reminder, Romans 12, 18. If possible, so far as it depends on me, live peaceably with all. Mm. This verse is part of the commands Paul gives in Romans 12, 9 through 21 that describe a lifestyle of serving and loving others. The verse recognizes that conflict can sometimes be unavoidable. We're not looking to avoid conflict. No. Mm -mm. But it includes some things that can help people live peaceably with one another, such as admitting wrong, apologizing, making things right, forgiving, not being the reason for an unpeaceful relationship. Mark eleven twenty five 25 and Matthew 6, 14 and 15 say, And whenever you stand praying, forgive, if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses. A final warning comes from Titus 3, verses 10 and 11. As for a person who stirs up division, after warning him once and then twice, have nothing more to do with him knowing that such a person is warped and sinful. He is self-condemned. Christians are ambassadors of heaven here on earth. How can we fulfill our roles as ambassadors if we don't follow through on the orders from our commander and chief? That's the question we have to answer. Recall this, 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. We are ministers of reconciliation. Yes. The Bible, verses second of 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19, discusses the ministry of reconciliation, which is the work that believers are given to do and the message they declare. The verse says, But all things are of God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not reckoning unto them their trespasses, and having committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Alas, if in the end communication has been cut off and the relationship suffers death, shake the dust off of your sandals and move on, knowing that God knew these things would happen, and people with their free will will wield sinful and unruly behaviors. It's inevitable. So rest, yes, rest in what Romans 12, 18 reminds us of in these circumstances. And Tony said it earlier, if it is possible as far be it for you, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Let's pray. Father, it's in your most holy name we come, recognizing that you reconciled us to you, Jesus, because of your sacrifice. And we're asking you, Jesus, to show us what we've done that doesn't honor you in relationship. As you bring to mind relationships, patterns, ways of our living, breathing, and doing cause us to repent of those and turn from those ways. Lord, you are in the business of reconciliation. Jesus, that's why you came. And so if we're ministers of reconciliation, let us have the fortitude, the grit, and the grace to walk out what you've called us to do. So we have relational integrity with both God 
and man. Thank you, Jesus, for your conviction. Thank you, Jesus, for showing us the way through. We trust you, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, we hope that you have enjoyed this message and have learned from it as well. We ask that you would share it with other people. Subscribe to our channel, like us, and follow us on our socials. Hey, let's get real about reality. Let's get real about forging a legacy together in faith, family, and freedom.